welcome to today's episode of Beyond Medicine, which is about the travel tales of Dr. Puneet Dhar. Dr. Puneet Dhar is a professor and head of surgical gastroenterology at Amrita Hospital, Faridabad. Uh, he did his MBBS from Maulana Azad Medical College, MS General Surgery from Safdar Jang Hospital, and MCH Surgical Gastroenterology from GP Pant Hospital. He went on to do his fellowship in transplant surgery in Cambridge. Dr. Puneet has over 125 publications and is on the editorial board of several national and international journals. Uh, he's a passionate uh, medical educator and is uh, well known for being woke among the youngsters. His non-medical interests include bird watching, wildlife photography, trekking, all of which obviously includes traveling. And that's what he's going to be talking about today to us. Uh, moderating the session will be Dr. Unnikrishna Menon. He's a professor of ENT. Uh, at Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences and also a faculty of the Medical Education Department. He did his MBBS from TNMC Medical College and Nair Hospital and MS ENT from KEM Hospital, Mumbai. He's the executive editor of Amrita Journal of Medicine and on the editorial board of uh, National ENT Journal and Journal of Medical Evidence. He likes to write and calls himself a pen pusher and his articles have been published in newspapers and he has even translated books. He's passionate about quizzing and is the patron founder of Amrita Quiz Club and Cochin Quiz Club. Uh, we like to have you on Marvelous Medicine talking about quizzing some other time uh, only. Thank you so much for agreeing to join us at such talk. Yeah. Puneet sir ne bulaya aur hum na aaye aise to. Yes. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, audience of Marvelous Medicine knows uh, Dr. Puneet sir very well. He's been our supporter right from the beginning, and he's one of the reasons we went global. We were noticed uh, even by the WHO because of him. Uh, over to you, Puneet. Thank you for those kind words, Vidya. I really marvel at how you managed to get this. You and Pata have managed to get learning general surgery and this off the ground continuously without fail. Uh, you know, even our national board sessions, uh, they we have uh, uh, punctuations if somebody's on leave. But this one is, uh, you know. It's all your passion and, uh, you know, more power to you. And uh, with as we start the, uh, you know, Marvelous Medicine uh, Roadshow very soon, uh, uh, a, a lot of best wishes. Uh, I'll just share my uh, thing. Is it visible? Yes, Puneet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, first off, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, welcome to this uh, meeting. And uh, uh, I'm extremely surprised that an anesthetist thought that a surgeon could ever be satisfied. Uh, and I'm sure everybody who's a traveler here knows that a traveler will never be satisfied. I know my bucket list has become a tub list, has become a huge bath, you know, Hungarian uh, Budapest bath. Uh, and until I kick the bucket, I don't think the bucket list is going to end. So I'll never be a satisfied traveler, I'm pretty sure, uh, even on a wheelchair if, if required. So uh, I was... I think uh, uh, Vidya used satisfied more to alliterate with her, with her language skills with surgeon. I was hoping she would have said sharp or smart. or So I, 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 let's uh, crack on. And I, just a couple of riders. Uh, I didn't volunteer to do this, uh, although it's a delight and a pleasure. It was uh, actually, we were supposed to have another Beyond Medicine session, which uh, uh, got delayed. And so I'm filling in. Uh, a surgeon, I said, is that satisfied and a traveler's bucket list uh, never ends and none of us should be satisfied because, uh, you know, Professor Nandi in the journal, every issue of the journal, he makes sure that, uh, you know, he's not satisfied with just mediocrity, he makes sure that it's better. So Ikigai is the reason, to, you, you know, your raison d'etre, why do you want to live, why do you want to get up in the morning and uh, go to work? So uh, if you, you should have a basic inner satisfaction, but I think uh, the satisfaction for perfection uh, and even our moderator Unni also personifies that uh, should always be there. Uh, and um, uh, the final rider that I didn't have enough time to improve uh, or use more or judicious uh, uh, photographs. So uh, why travel? So I think uh, genetic, we evolved from nomadic hunter gatherer. So it's in our blood. Uh, it entails wishful thinking, it keeps hope alive, uncertainty always, you know, uh, a planned trip which goes exactly as it's planned is probably the most forgettable. It's food for the soul. 
you could you could travel into your own neighborhood when i was in cochin uh, i i discovered you know almost 6 or 7 years later uh, the you know the areas of fort kochi and some uh, backwater areas which are complete uh, you know uh, uh, revelations in what all one could uh, you know go through in rishikesh i discovered the beatles ashram which is uh, you know uh, ephemeral fame and suddenly it's been taken over by the forest uh, in delhi there are places like sundar nursery and so many other places where you can just get lost and travel within you could travel to your native place to connect with your roots or you could travel with something to as alien a destination as possible uh, to connect up with people cultures language nature wildlife your deeper spiritual self you know it could be a pilgrimage uh, you must travel for the pure magic to open your eyes to freshen your mind for the adventure that it entails uh, it definitely makes you cooler at my age with the younger generation it makes you humbler when you travel and you you know you're face to face with a leopard or a lion you realize you know all your ego is transformed uh, into something you know you realize your true self that you're just a you know mere microcosm in the bigger scheme of things it gives you perspective it challenges you shakes you and definitely rejuvenates you it gives you tales you can bore others with like this and definitely adds color to your life why i travel well lots of reasons uh, many people thought i moved to cochin because of the prawns and pineapple and uh, probably some of it is true so food is definitely sampling different fare is always uh, top of whether it's snacks or the uh, you know uh, whatever uh, this is my suitcase when i was visiting my son at afmc on the way back i was carrying these uh, chivda bombs uh, both to consume and as gifts so that's that's my entire because i taken stuff for my son so only one side uh, of the thing was uh, my stuff the ha half of the carry on bag is full of food uh, and in fact the very last uh, uh, weekend this weekend i went to bombay uh, ostensibly to meet my son but uh, very soon you know it snowballed into my wife also joining on a son saturday because we got reservations to this uh, uh, restaurant which is the number one listed restaurant in india uh, very expensive, but a, but an experiential uh, food, uh, you know, uh, travel worthy, drool worthy, uh, absolutely stunning experience. I know what you all think why I travel and uh, definitely it's true. All these little beauties are always beckoning you. I think uh, uh, they can challenge any fashion designer in terms of color, uh, size, their neurot <laughs> neuroticity, everything you like. They're, they're strutting around. Um, I, I do like to travel to give it perspective, how uh, distorted or broken it may appear. Um, I, I sometimes like the light to connect up with different modes uh, of travel and I might find myself in a different uh, route altogether. Uh, I like to look at things at a different light, even in a flight. And uh, I guess that's my excuse. That's my mother who at 80 plus uh, with the hearing aid, walking aid, all other aids still insists on having a swinging time and never say die. Uh, attitude. So uh, I guess it must be genetic, just like the hunter gatherers to enjoy. Her father was also one of the first uh, physicians from North India to train in England. Uh, and uh, the, uh, avid traveler himself traveled all over the world in the time when they had to go by ship. Uh, I travel for all the exotic. Uh, this is the uh, this is what really brought me into nature photography was this uh, trip which was happened to be on my 50th birthday. I just went because it coincided with my birthday. And I was stunned to see this the famous great migration where this herd mentality, these millions of these uh, uh, wildebeest jump, in, jump across the Mara River from Serengeti to Masai Mara. And it's an absolutely stunning. I always used to see it on BBC and wonder if I'll ever, you know, be able to see it, let alone capture it. And I got all those shots along with the crocodiles and everything. Uh, it's to conquer my own fears. I never thought, uh, uh, you know, in forensic class, I got up and said that, uh, when they said that half the people die of snake fright from non-venomous snakes and I got up and said I'll be one of them. I never thought in a, a ISG conference, uh, you know, two hours before a talk, I would be chasing this snake uh, uh, to get the, you know, the fork out at the right time and uh, catch it at that time. Uh, so I travel also to photo document and uh, uh, this is uh, my first trip where 
uh, with uh, Setu Raman, my one of my first mentors in photography. And you can see these are slightly ham photos. Uh, we went to Valparai, which is on the Tamil Nadu Kerala border, uh, ostensibly because it's a very photogenic area, lots of wildlife, lots of birds. Uh, you get hornbills there. And uh, we were staying in this very scenic uh, Sinadurai bungalow, which is the Paris uh, uh, tea gardens. They have a bungalow for the manager that converted into a tourist uh, hut. So beautiful in the morning, you know, suddenly we got this uh, message that there are wild elephants in the tea gardens below. Grab your cameras and come. And of course, we wanted to uh, get a closer look. And we never thought because of the uh, tea bushes, we'll be actually safer from the elef elephants and get a much closer look. Uh, in the evening, we got uh, news that these bisons are the exact same place. And, uh, you know, the next morning we had a million birds exactly at the same spot. So, uh, you know, getting all these cute uh, photo shoots. Uh, the same place uh, is one of the last habitats for this endangered species, the lion-tailed uh, macaque. And, uh, you know, we've, we've rendered his uh, uh, habitat so, uh, so unlivable that poor guys, you know, sitting on a, a edge of a sign or of a human sign, which says uh, caution lion tailed macaques here, endangered species. Almost half the world's population actually stays in this. And we were lucky to get, uh, I think, 40% of them probably coming as a flock. But shocking to see how, you know, they were living off the plastic that we used. And you realize why they're uh, this. Uh, guys actually consuming some of it, not realizing how, you know, you realize why we are threatening. Uh, and uh, no surprise that this, uh, his uh, colleague and friend is looking up to the almighty and saying, when will these humans stop? So I think what's very important that we need to do is sustainable tourism. We have to be mindful of the impact of mass tourism because that can, you know, the way we have uh, uh, Uttarakhand uh, shook Kedarnath, the Almighty is shaking the land to say, uh, you know, COVID uh, was a culling experience. Uh, uh, be mindful of uh, how you are behaving in this world. Uh, it's important to go off the beaten path, go off season. Uh, I mean, not in this uh, summer vacation, you'll find a jam on the Manali Road, the Dehradun Masuri Road, which takes normally 25 minutes. Uh, I've spent four hours of that from Rishikesh. Uh, the high volume and Himalayas were meant to be for the, uh, you know, the completely pure at heart to cleanse themselves, not to be this helicopter mass tourism eight lane highway going into the Chardham. I'm not sure that's the right thing. That's why uh, you see uh, Joshimat sinking. There are a million other uh, places where you can cleanse yourself as well. The only dham I went to actually was Tungnath, which is the uh, the highest shivling and a spectacular, you know, beautiful. It's a Switzerland of India, Chopta. It's right above that, uh, and a lot of bird life there. Uh, you must connect with communities. You know, when we went to Masai to Masai Mara, we connected with the uh, Masai community and see how uh, you know they they utilize the them to actually uh, run the tourism. Uh, you spend money that supports the locals, like rather than having coke and uh, you know. Uh, single malt scotch there. Uh, travel to leave world a better place. Uh, you know, uh, we are much more tolerant of culture, language. Uh, travel between conflict areas can actually reduce tension as a act as a track to diplomacy. Uh, we've heard so many cool medical stories. I think uh, it was uh, Subhash Aswain where they, you know, from Pakistan, we had these stories of uh, patients coming. We had in Amrita, we had uh, an Afghan soldier who lost both hands. Uh, coming to a Hindu institution, getting a Christian uh, patient's organs to, you know, survive. Uh, so all those cool stories, uh, the sustainable medical tourism also should be there. I travel to get spiritual experiences and this is, uh, and sometimes you have to travel, you know, Darjeeling is actually closer here somewhere to the Kanchanjanga, but you actually have to travel to uh, Tiger Hill. Uh, that's Ghoom, uh, the town of Ghoom uh, and the Ghoom monastery in the foreground. Uh, to get the first rays of the sun as they surreally strike across the Kanchanjanga. Um, uh, this is about uh, 10 years back and you, you need all the right opportunities to be able to do it. All the holes in the Swiss cheese must connect. Uh, this was, uh, my daughter had her uh, graduation at the National Law School, uh, Calcutta. And, you know, that gave us an opportunity to go there. After that, the weekend was free. We decided to hop over. My brother-in-law was a 
uh, in the Air Force Intelligence in Siliguri. He gave us his car and we drove to Gangtok and Darjeeling and it was possible. Um, you know, one of my colleagues, Salim, who I think there on the Zoom, he, he lost his very young brother very soon, uh, who was a mountaineer. And he covenanted that, you know, with all his friends that he's going to do the Everest base camp. Uh, and when he joined us in Amrita, Faridabad, uh, I told him, you know, I travel a lot, so we'll have to cover for each other. And he said, the only thing I want to take is, you know, this time in uh, March, April, I'm going to go for the Everest base camp. With, everybody's coming from all over the world. They're connecting up here and we are going. And unfortunately, you know, uh, fate didn't conspire. His uh, daughter had Gilinbare and, uh, you know, he next six months just got lost in rehabilitation. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, uh, whenever we have the time and uh, this thing, we must take the opportunity uh, and uh, make sure. My own uh, journey started because my wife was discovered to have a, a aneurysm in her brain. And, you know, she said, I'm not sure how long let's, so uh, the Isle of Capri was on top of our bucket list. And from then on, we haven't looked back. So I actually went to Tiger Hill just a couple of months back. Uh, and uh, we didn't even go to Darjeeling. We didn't see the uh, Kanchanjanga because we were, the place we were staying in East uh, South Sikkim uh, was, you know, from our window, it was there. And I didn't even realize it till the last day. Uh, but I went to Tiger Hill just to catch this very rare bird, the hill partridge, which uh, sort of uh, comes there to this one tea stall, which is there. So you need all the right dots to connect. You can get surreal experiences like this is while going to Cobbett. Uh, early morning, this the you know the sun's rays striking that it looks like the 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 water is on fire. So many of these are transformative uh, experiences, and like the daffodils of Wordsworth, they stay with you lifelong. Uh, lots of unusual experiences as well. Um, you know, some not so pleasant, which I I feel I went to Krakow alone because I wanted to visit Auschwitz after having read all those uh, books on the Holocaust and all that. Uh, went to Cambodia for a drug trial, but wanted to go to the killing fields. And it's amazing to see how, uh, you know, we need to understand, study and make sure that we don't make those mistakes again. The intolerance is coming back all over the world, conflict situations, zones coming up in, uh, you know, Eurasia, in uh, Middle East, in India, uh, surrounding us. So we need to make sure that we, we you know, when we travel, we uh, acculturate those areas. We see that uh, what we can do. Krakow was such a moving experience. I feel after that, I went because I thought uh, nobody in my family will want to go uh, there. And uh, it completely changed a lot of things inside me. Uh, cruise into uh, Iceland, Greenland, where you can see what unspoilt nature can do. The volcanoes sitting uh, cheek by jowl with glaciers. The two tectonic plates, the Eurasian and the American plate, right next to each other. Uh, you can see the aurora borealis there, which is a, a surreal experience. The northern lights experience on its own. Uh, Adventure-wise, I think scuba, snorkeling, skydiving, hot air ballooning, whitewater rafting. These are uh, another reasons to actually travel to an area which is not in your own, uh, you know, realm. Uh, as a culture vulture, I think to attune to your finer brain, you want to go outside your own uh, uh, area to, you know, stimulate the brain. Uh, languages, you know, Unni, who's here uh, as the moderator, uh, is an expert on etymology. And I think we should do probably one session on medical etymology with him sometime. So there are a lot of medical connects you get. You If you, if you go to Padua, every street is like an anatomy lesson. It's via Falopa, and you know, it's 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 so so cute, so interesting. Uh, I love plays. I love the circus in uh, in uh, Russia, the Cirque du Soleil in uh, uh, the U.S. and uh, other places. Uh, I love the ballet on ice, uh, ballets, operas. I got the opportunity in Europe, you know, operas I could never understand when I saw them on TV, but when I saw them with subtitles, and uh, I, I, we had gone for a drug trial to Prague. Uh, and, you know, because Prague, the Czech language is not that well understood. They had uh, German and English subtitles there. Uh, and I understand, and, you know, enjoyed so much more of it. Uh, I had two of my uh, former colleagues who went for it because they, they'd heard uh, Prague is famous for other uh, uh, activities like uh, uh, Pata has written about Thailand in the, in the Learning General Surgery. Uh, a beautiful introduction to this talk. Uh, and so they went for a strip show. Uh, and I could see the next day they were, you know, more, sh more shy than ever. Uh, 
uh, but uh, I, I had, I didn't know this other gentleman who, who was very keen to come to the opera with me. And he turned out he subsequently is, he's currently the uh, vice chancellor of uh, Rajiv Gandhi Health University, and he was just before this, uh, uh, you know, the National Medical Council Postgraduate uh, Education Board, which is now non-existent. Uh, he was the uh, prior uh, once he left, he was the uh, uh, director of that uh, section. Uh, it's also lovely to visit the settings of movies. If you go to Rome uh, and you've seen Roman Holiday, uh, or you you know you see uh, those Tolkien series, and you want to uh, connect up with New Zealand, uh, you see Harry Potter. The kids wanted to go all over Scotland to look at the Annick Castle. Uh, you know, three idiots. You have to go to Pangong. So uh, a lot of those things connect up to our brain. So I love uh, ballet. So when I went to uh, Moscow, I love uh, watching. This is the Kirov Ballet at Saint Petersburg. Uh, you know, the beautiful connect up with, uh, you know, all the, the best uh, uh, the world has to offer. This is uh, uh, Peterhof near, uh, you know, the summer palace of uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, opera there, which I couldn't, this was in Russian. I, I didn't realize there were no, because the, no tourists go to Russia, so they don't expect you to have anything. So instead, I, uh, you know, ask somebody to take a photograph while everybody else is concentrating on the thing. Uh, one of my favorite uh, buildings also architecture uh, you can connect up with you can you can realize why certain things are done what is the you know you go to bombay you can connect up with the history you can just walk in delhi daryaganj area and you uh, realize what uh, you know why each part of these things are there this is the church of spilt blood in st petersburg one of my favorite cities uh, of course you can invent lovely ways to travel the classic way is uh, uh, is uh, the conference and you extend on uh, so uh, I wanted to visit the Sula vineyards in uh, Nasik uh, because I'd never, you know, I'd done the American uh, wine tours, but I, I was told the Nasik ones are lovely. So I agreed to uh, inaugurate my, uh, uh, you know, ex-student and colleague uh, Aditya's uh, uh, center along with some other uh, politicians. Uh, so, you know, I got a chance to visit Sula and do some lovely birding in the in absolutely the center point of India, Dhule. Uh, in, in addition, I learned, and I think that could be another topic for this marvelous medicine, how morphosal medicine should actually be practiced, how these people have, you know, consortiumized uh, various, uh, uh, you know, tools and uh, things, and they're able to do stuff which many larger cities actually don't. Um, so a lot of learning experiences, even while you're traveling for other things. Uh, this is the IESG conference in Calcutta, uh, which was right near the airport and uh, uh, Rajarhat area is just about five kilometers from there. So early morning, six o'clock, three of us, uh, I joined these three young uh, GI surgeons and colorectal surgeons who, uh, HPV surgeon who uh, were also avid birders and enjoyed, uh, you know, seeing a whole lot of uh, thing, including dragonflies, a whole lot of exotic Eastern birds. Uh, another experience that I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, because since we've covered birds in two sessions, uh, I'm trying to cover the other uh, travel experiences. Uh, most of our surgical gastro conferences are around puja time. So when I was in uh, Calcutta around puja time, uh, I heard a quiz question which said, which is the idol making district in Cal Kolkata? And, you know, quickly the answer came was Kumartuli. And uh, I just bought, changed my camera at that time, which I was carrying. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to go and see this. Uh, suburb of Calcutta where they do the, uh, you know, and uh, I thought it would be a good uh, photo opportunity and clearly I wasn't the only one who thought <laughs> that it was, it's a very popular place to actually document all of this. How they use the initial base, uh, convert it with Kumar Tuli, Kumar means the potters, so they, they adapted use of mud to uh, finish it off uh, and, you know, convert it finally into much finer stuff, uh, finished off with all the finer details. Uh, including the face and you know hard work at that uh, and then slowly the color comes on add on color to that uh, yeah, color comes on slowly and uh, finally it's fully co colored so much so that you don't know uh, which one is the real and which one is the surreal uh, and you know fine artistry for all that mm. and i paid my uh, you know obeisance to the uh, creator of the created of the creator so it's the you know these guys are creating the creator so i think uh, we need to salute them as well another inventive uh, is this uh, motley gang of uh, rotarians uh, uh, we have this fantastic uh, opportunity called the rotary friendship exchange and this is a group of uh, somerset rotarians uh, uh, this cute couple 
has adopted a, uh, uh, orphanage in Chennai and they come actually every year. Uh, this couple, Nigerian couple, is a, is a doctor couple who now uh, own one of the uh, uh, main, ma manor houses in one of the villages outside of uh, uh, Taunton uh, uh, County headquarters. Uh, and uh, he, this, uh, the gentleman, uh, uh, Leke and Yinka, they are gynecologist and ophthalmologist. And uh, with them, we did a whole lot of projects because this in friendship exchange, they come and stay with us. Uh, Piers was my guest uh, when he was here. Uh, we stayed with a lot of them when we went there as well. Uh, and with them, we showed them all the Indian facilities in medicine. This was a, a Gidhar Eye Center in, uh, uh, you know, and with this group, we finally, because Yinka is an ophthalmologist, we've done multiple, got the opportunity. They, they uh, you know, uh, Rotary has this uh, concept called uh, matching grants. So, you know, if we put in one lakh, the, another club adds one lakh, the Rotary Foundations adds another lakh. So we have the power of multiplication and we, we use this Netra IWAN, which is usable by anybody in Kerala. It's, you know, they can take it. It has all the facilities, including doing surgeries in, inside an IWAN, uh, a, a lovely initiative. Uh, subsequently, we also helped them set up a uh, eye hospital in uh, uh, Ni in Nigeria uh, while they were in UK, uh, and also another uh, Mofasil center. We set up a uh, uh, we gave them the microscope, uh, ocular microscopes, and all that. So a lot of you know, with, with, along with the fun activities, a lot of stuff can actually uh, open up. And it's of course cult a acculturation when Piers was having food at our house, and I went there. Another unusual mode of travel is humanitarian travel, and uh, uh, I had this opportunity. I'm normally not, a, you know, don't volunteer for such things, but because uh, the Amrita guys from Cochin were taking a team to Kashmir for the floods uh, more than ten years back, I uh, thought I should volunteer because I thought, you know, none of them can even speak. Many of them can't speak Hindi. Forget about Kashmiri. So I thought I would be of use there, and they decided to put me in charge of this uh, mission. And I had to cut short the I, the surgical gastro meeting in Ahmedabad to be flagged off by the, the then Home Minister. And uh, we had this, uh, you know, this, it's an opportunity to connect. And I realized uh, none of them, you know, worried about religion and all that. Uh, they just didn't care who was there so long as they got the help. Uh, I don't know how I'm doing for time. So, uh, uh, so uh, solo travel is something we're all scared of. And uh, when I was in Cambridge for a year, uh, my family, you know, came and went uh, fairly frequently, uh, and I had this long, long-term Schengen visa for six months. But after four visits, uh, my wife used to get some uh, discounted tickets as well. After four trips, she said, uh, "You know, Amrita is going to throw me out if I come uh, uh, another time." And I said, "I've got, you know, one month of Schengen, and uh, I won't get the visa again from India so easily." And the travel from there to, uh, you know. Uh, to uh, Europe was cheaper than going from Cochin to Coimbatore by bus. <laughs> the the flights were actually cheaper than that. So I had, you know, that October, I had my visa, visa was expiring on the 2nd of November. I had five weekends in October and uh, I decided to go solo for the first time actually to, uh, to Krakow uh, and visit Auschwitz. And I was so moved that, uh, you know, I decided to go every weekend one weekend I was transplant surgeon on call and general surgeon on call. So I combined the two into one weekend and every weekend I was in Barcelona, Bratislava, uh, Seville, uh, all of them amazing, uh, you know, uh, travel experiences, even alone. So don't, don't, uh, don't stop if you, you know, barely, I've seen a lot of couples say, oh, but I don't only go with my husband or wife or, you know, uh, somebody else. So I, you can always do that. Um, what the future holds, I think um, uh, uh, telemedicine and AI boom post COVID is going to reduce our conference based travel. Uh, there's definitely going to be more burnout and better afford affordability and the willingness to ex be experiential. So personal travel and rejuvenative travel is definitely going to increase. Uh, I also foresee that, you know, as we are recognizing the burn burnout syndromes and all that, there's go going to be an en enforced group or cohort travel. We haven't done this in medicine because you know we've always wanted somebody to stay back in fact the all institutes and all have an enforced uh, rule that half the people must stay back there which doesn't hold if there's only one person in the department anyway so why you know uh, 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 worry about that because the entire resident staff is only there they should just make sure that uh, so a lot of these tech companies have 
they take groups out of their milieu and uh, you know it uh, fosters uh, 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 group activities and fosters much better team spirit rather than the festering uh, uh, you know internecine conflicts all our medical colleges and institutes seem to be having uh, it's certainly better than retail therapy for uh, as far as its uh, therapeutic benefits are concerned uh, why I think doctors should travel, I think to rejuvenate and prevent burnout. Uh, they must connect with family and friends because sometimes that's the only opportunity. Uh, last month I had a conference in the, uh, the World Congress of uh, IHPBA was in uh, Cape Town and as uh, the national president, uh, I had a debate there. Uh, so I just casually asked my wife if she would come. Uh, I thought Cape Town was a you know slightly dangerous uh, uh, city. As it turned out, thanks to the ladies, thanks to the ladies, uh, my daughter and my wife, while I was attending the conference, they would do all the day tours, apartheid tours in all the so-called areas, which were, which I thought I wouldn't have dreamt of going uh, uh, anytime. And we finally ended up having such a fabulous time because in the evenings we did uh, the local comedy. I went for the local uh, African music. Uh, we went for the jazz uh, shows there. We went for the wine country tour, which is absolutely stunning. I never believe that it could be so beautiful you know they use these old railway lines and converted them into uh, sort of uh, uh, connecting each of those in spectacular settings of course uh, doctors also should explore medical tourism opportunities because uh, india is now a growing hub for uh, you know excellence in medical care and instead of extorting and doing unethical work i think the empty bed should be filled in by patients from places who uh, you know, can ill afford to go to the richer Western countries and, you know, provide them slightly uh, better and slightly more subsidized, uh, uh, you know, opportunities as compared to the West. Uh, the medical education aspects, I'm sure Unni will uh, don't stress. He's going to stress about it moderately when he mod does his moderation bits. So I think uh, uh, just to list out, if I have time, uh, my favorite experiences, uh, I think uh, it would be uh, whale watching for humpbacks, humpback whales uh, off the coast of Iceland. It was absolutely stunning one hour experience that I've had. I, I never thought, you know, I, every time somebody gave me that offer, I said, you know, are we going to see anything? Is it going to be, it was an apps, you know, the, the way they come out, the way you can predict the, and, you know, the, what they do and how, you know, the, the mere size enormity and uh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful, uh, you know, feat of nature. Uh, Ladakh, the particularly the uh, Ladakh is healing. It's it's spiritual. You know, the moment you land there, I don't know. It might be the oxygen, rarefied oxygen going to my head. With there's going to say, uh, <laughs> but uh, I think there is something that is healing uh, as you just you know step out there. There's something uh, peaceful about those uh, you know um, uh, devoid of any flora the uh, mountains, the colors of each mountain is different. But the weird Hundar sand dunes, it defies history, geography, anthropology. In the middle of the Nubra Valley, you have these uh, uh, sand dunes uh, with these double uh, humped Bactrian camels there. And uh, probably, you know, they, they say that it is uh, 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 somehow a leftover from uh, Alexander history doesn't say that that was the route because it was probably too high for him to reach there but uh, it somehow matches the you know the Greek the Macedonian area uh, camels there so that's a you know uh, unusual experience that I had uh, being there uh, in, as far as Indian monuments go I think the beautifully maintained Rani Ki Vav in Pat Patan the step well which uh, you know we discovered only uh, much later in the 20th century and so it's pristinely uh, maintained uh, it's a beautiful i'm sorry i think i skipped putting the photograph uh, i axed it out uh, and uh, it's still maintained in its uh, you know glory and elora elora cave for me is particularly shows the secular ethos of india you have the uh, you know the buddhist caves from the second third fourth fifth uh, century the Hindu caves from the you know six to eight or so, and subsequently last was the Jain caves, and it's only the Jain caves where you know the Tirthan, the the uh, the, Shwet, the Digambar Jains are do not believe in uh, clothing, 
So some idiots with uh, narrow minds, uh, they have mutilated the genitals of all those uh, Tirthankars and all that. Otherwise, none of them bothered to even, you know, each of them is maintaining the same pristine uh, glory over uh, uh, two millennia. Uh, hot air balloon over Cappadocia in Turkey was absolutely out of the world. It's a moonscape. You go over different colored mushroom shaped rocks and uh, you know like a, a moonscape and a similar experience which was again you know like this is some of the best things in uh, life are free was uh, for, in cochin you know the naval airport has this uh, uh, hang glider and a micro light uh, aircraft where you can uh, it actually going over my home uh, with nothing to you know you could just fall off with just a, 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 a spectacle to cover your eyes uh, snoop, scuba and snorkeling, I think uh, I discovered a whole new world which I didn't know existed till five years back. And culturally, I think uh, June this time in St. Petersburg is absolutely stunning. There's no night. Uh, so it's the northernmost capital and the entire city is awake. Uh, it's very expensive to go. I stayed in a youth hostel for, I think, uh, 10,000 uh, uh, a day for a shared uh, kitchen. And uh, that was uh, beautiful, uh, you know, everything is open 24 hours. Uh, with that, I think I come back to my bird, the collared Arakari from Costa Rica, which uh, was, uh, you know, I was, I would have almost got stuck there when the COVID, the pandemic struck, and I had to hurriedly rush back to the US and take the last flight, Air India flight back to uh, Rishikesh and uh, join back there. So with that, I end my uh, formal part of it, and I welcome uh, Unni's uh, and other people's comments. Oh, let me take a uh, some, let me take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> now, Unni, can you please yes. turn on your camera? Um, oh yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, and uh, Unni, uh, please. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm stopping sharing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so you can see Dr. Mathur there, we've done some lovely with the uh, IESGO, uh, you know, the uh, Greek organization. We did a lot of uh, uh, travel to Japan, China, I think so many places we went. Uh, we've had a lovely time with so many of you here. With uh, Avinash last year at Leeds and London, we, we were together. Yeah, Unni, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, catching my breath for two reasons. One is the amount of traveling done. Second is, I think you were uh, a little bit rushed for time. You're really rushing through any of this. People have taken a little bit more. People have <laughs> taken a few breaths and sips of water in between <laughs> all those traveling. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, so, you traveled uh, at lightning speed. <laughs> yeah, really, it, it really conquered the right? <laughs> uh, Couple of thoughts before I, 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 uh, with one eye on the laptop for the cricket score, I think 15 minutes may share toss will happen. Uh, and one eye was on the comments. I think a lot of comments were coming in. People were posting about their own uh, travel experience emails and all. In between all that, I must tell uh, a couple of things. One is I'm so happy to have been given the honor of moderating this marvelous medicine, especially when he says speaking. Second is to uh, many of you all, uh, even at the risk of sounding melodramatic, a couple of points I almost felt uh, 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 throat filling up and almost like you no know, tears welling up because uh, uh, for me, being in Amrita, uh, coming in contact with Punisar has been a huge uh, uh, effect for my psyche and soul. And uh, he introduced me to so many extracurricular things. He took interest in so many extracurricular things, and you know, it was a fas fascinating uh, personality to be come in contact with. And uh, his leaving was, you know, some extent, it did affect me uh, personally, emotionally. And so, some of the things that he mentioned, I could recollect you know, when we were together to sit and talk. And you know, uh, it, especially when he said about plays and all those places, I remember that he was the one who introduced me to the. Uh, Place it would happen in Cochin, which unfortunately has closed off now since COVID. Uh, so yeah, it was a great pleasure listening to the talk, listening to Bunisa speaking, and many of the things that he has covered. So yes, uh, uh, travel broadens the mind. And recently, just incidentally, Dr. Bunit, I somebody out of the random, there was a, a joke which came: travel broadens the mind and loosens the bowels. So I hope <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Delhi Belly. So, uh, Delhi Belly. I hope nobody uh, 
uh, had or any experience on that account. Uh, yeah, but as I uh, said, if everything went as per plan, what's the fun? You know, exactly you plan, you know, like, uh, and everything goes exactly going to plan. That's so boring. Uh, so my uh, own thoughts came from the fact that uh, I think it was Sunday morning or something. Punish sir sent this message that do you have any points to speak on or points to mention about why doctors travel? So I just had. Written on a few points, if you all don't mind, I could just sort of share those. I think Punisa didn't uh, really mention many of those. I thought so a few did. things. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank, thank you. So uh, I just wrote written on a few points. So one I thought was, uh, like, as doctors, primarily we are, you know, we communicate, we meet and greet a lot of uh, people who are strangers. You know, we have our patients who walk into our clinics are strangers and we are introduced to a whole new world of their lives. You know, it's like traveling into their lives, into their worlds. So if at all, as uh, uh, personalities, we are stranger shy sort of, you no, know, I think the best way to cure that, you know, as I'm making medical terms, to cure that is to be a traveler. You travel and there's no, uh, no such, no more better example of meeting, being forced to meet strangers and living with them and getting to know them than traveling. And there again, what sir said, don't don't plan to the T. No, don't plan no, absolutely everything to the T and then go. No, Be ready to have new experiences, meet people, uh, food, etc., etc. And that becomes a way of just being, and especially I think when I speak, I'd probably be speaking of the younger generation, younger doctors, doctor travelers. Just be ready in your, you no, know, keep your mind and eyes and ears open to meet people. And that would be a sort of experience to be able to handle the different types of patients in your in your practice. Uh, the other thing which Sir was mentioned was medical education. So, uh, in fact, as we speak, these three days is the next session of our medical education. The teacher training program is actually going on and we speak about the NMC has introduced a new curriculum, CBME, competency-based medical education, in which they speak of doctors having five roles. So one is clinician, which is intuitively what we think of as doctors, but also to be a leader of a healthcare team, to be a good communicator, to be a lifelong learner, to be a professional. So some of these, if you sort of draw analog analogous with traveling, you know, to be a leader of a team, to be a good communicator, these things are also sometimes, many times happen in uh, in travel. You know, sometimes you're uh, you're going in a bus or train. Maybe you're, it's just you and spouse as a small team or small group. But you, it could so happen that you would have to take a lead in something, especially if it's a, a medical event happening or some unforeseen event happens. It could so happen that you have to take the lead, and so you know, or you have to become the communicator. As Sir said he went to Kashmir primarily because. He was feeling pity on, on the non Kashmiri speaking so uh, people, and he, uh, you know, helped just for that. You know, just that one aspect that you could be there that you communicate, nothing else, just simply, you know, apni zuban bolne wala, you know, that sort of thing. So, you know, that becomes a, a, a good thing for a traveling point of view. Then, sir, as to our conference duty. So, personally, if you ask me, most of my in India conference, uh, traveling has been thanks to conferences. Calcutta, Gaya, so I went to Sundarbans. Uh, uh, where was this? Uh, I'd gone to uh, Vijay was another conference, so I went to the. So many of these places which I've seen are thanks to the conferences. So Nagpur gaya, so I went to uh, Pinch uh, thing also. Although yet I must complain to Punit sir, I've yet to see a tiger. Uh, I've gone to Kaziranga, I have to go. On. So amongst my, uh, uh, so I'm a specialist in laryngology. Uh, my sub interest is laryngology. So it's a joke amongst them. Kunlin, up to share nahi dekha, you know, we will do all the areas possible. I'm yet to see a uh, tiger in its uh, in the in the jungle. Yeah. So conference then the, from the research point of view. So you know, the travel inculcates the habit of keeping your, as I have already said that, keeping your eyes, ears, and minds open, and that's a useful quality for the research minded. You know, to not to be just from the books, but you know, something new can happen. As I was saying. Uh, about uh, Krakow, Auschwitz, how it, I can imagine this, and I've read about it and just reading about it and seeing images, I've, I have felt that emotion which others described when you're, when you're there, how it must have opened your, literally, you know, like, ye bhi ho sakta tha, ye bhi hua hai, you know, and how 
uh, just just to you know expand on two of the things that you said there uh, huh. uh, i i was so overcome that you know uh, they told this girl was young girl polish girl was uh, telling us about she took us to the you know the new after we go to auschwitz there's this birkenau the new camp which was uh, set up to exterminate on a mass scale uh, and uh, the they take you to the to the to the lavatory quarters of that and said she said this the person who's in charge is the scheitzfuhrer the shit commandant and this was the oh. best job in the uh, concentration oh, camp oh, okay. we all laughed and yeah. then she went on then you give five reasons why it was the best job and you cried at the end of it you cried yeah i remember really you were so overcome yeah. uh, i thought i'll never have humor but within five minutes you know like you said how to bounce back uh, you know the, there was a couple looking at a in a, there was a g- small gift shop as i said i said i you know i walked out, they were the only south asian looking couple i said i hope you're not looking for gift cards saying wish you were here <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a famous uh, story of Willy Brandt after Germany after the World War he went and knelt down to the famous thing of of uh, rumors, you know, the best example of uh, rumors that he bent down and uh, so it, yeah, so that was there. And of course, the last but not the least, the most pros- prosaic reason of all, not taking a break, simply get away from it all, get past the madding crowd. And for this, as Sir said, yeah, Sir spoke about Kochi, and I. I regret that, sir. If you're here, I would still love to have gone with you to many places, hidden places in Kochi itself, in your own city, wherever you are. I know where all the listeners in this group are from various cities, and I'm sure you would not have seen uh, many places in your city or in your town. So just, just that, take a break or a Sunday, and uh, so you're there, and we are still. It keeps. I've still not gone to Kadamakudi. You know, Kadamakudi. You know, Dinesh keeps saying, "My wife is in Noor, then she knows the place, etc." One Sunday morning, Chalte Kadamakudi. I've still not gone there. No, the nearest and one of the borders delights. I believe I've heard from a lot from Shabrish and Dinesh and all about. Next time, uh, instruction, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know those, those, those things. Some. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so nothing like a bit of travel, even if short distances, to refresh the body, uh, mind, and soul. And I had, I had written down a, you know, I went to when when I it's my habit of when as a write up is as I said I'm a pen pusher. So when whenever a writing uh, write up is indicated, my first thing is to go to the quote section. You no, know? there are so many websites you go and you get quotes on that. So I one quote I would like to sort of end with is Ibn Battuta's quote. So he said, "Traveling leaves you speechless." And then turns into a storyteller. And in brackets, I've written, you know, "This is my not as a raconteur par excellence, Dr. Kunidhar." So uh, I could like literally sit and just listen to sir speaking, and there's no end to it. So uh, hats off to you, sir, and more power to you and to myself. I've not traveled one tenth of what you have. I hope to do so in the years to come. And as you said before, we all kick the bucket. So uh, I, I'm not sure how we take it from here. We are now. We are only forty-six minutes into the session, so do we? Yeah. Uh, how do we take yeah, it from yeah, here? Yeah. Only we'll get the audience in. Ajay Sharma, you have your hand up. Would you like to say something, Ajay Sharma? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Dr. Puneet, they are very inspiring indeed. Uh, I'm really uh, very impressed with what you have said. I must say that unlike you, I'm a reluctant traveler, and I'm dragged to various places by my wife. and i have to really go with her i have no other options but once i reach there i like i love mother nature uh, like you do uh, certainly not as much traveled as you are uh, but really one of my key reasons for traveling and is uh, really going to so many parts of india for teaching and training and my selfish purposes are only two one is to learn from colleagues and thereby at the same time share what some of the things which you have learned For last forty years, and secondly, to see the places, and thirdly, as you mentioned, <laughs> you know, I'm a bit of foodie, uh, uh, getting and learning for uh, different types of, uh, uh, you know, uh, food and cuisines. So these are some of my reasons for uh, really uh, traveling, where the travel is the byproduct and education is the main reason. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Ajay, for joining in the middle of your workday. Uh, Subhashini, you have your hand up. You wanted to say something? Yes, I agree with uh, Doctor. What Doctor Sharma said in terms of you know exploring different cuisines. I was late to the party. I don't know whether that was mentioned. So you know, I'm I'm a yes, staunch yes, uh, vegetarian. I've never eaten meat in my life. But I was in Iceland, and one of the delicacies is cured shark. 
and horse meat. I drew the line at horse meat, but I said I will try the cured shark. So oh, the, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, this is inspirational. So I think, I I'm think also very curious to this inspirational. <laughs> yeah, so I think it, it pushes us out of our comfort zone, the number yeah. one. And number two, you know, he talked about solo travel. I, I completely agree. I'm single. You know, I travel. My daughter just went away to college. So, you know, I have, you know, I travel a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I, I used, I started traveling solo. And then I found this wonderful, wonderful travel companion in Iceland. She is 80 years old. But has the heart <laughs> of, uh, of uh, she has the heart of a forty year old. He's eighty. <laughs> yeah. So, so so Marie, my friend and my travel companion, is eighty years old. She's had three hip replacements, but she has the heart of a she has the mind of a forty year old. And we since uh, twenty seventeen, we've been traveling everywhere. We've been to Iceland. We've been to Ireland. We've been to Alaska. We are going to Finland in uh, um, uh, February to sleep under a glass igloo to watch the no northern lights. So solo travel is 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 great, and you know you try you you meet all kinds of people and you gel with them, and uh, you know uh, it, it can be a great thing. So that was my point. Thank you. No, yeah. absolutely. I I you know I I I deleted those. I should have put those uh, photographs from my solo travels because. I, uh, you know, till that day, I have never even seen a movie or even watched TV at home alone. If only <laughs> somebody else is up, I have, uh, you know, but I was amazed, uh, you know, when I was in Cambridge, uh, my family left and suddenly I was alone one day when I dropped them off at the airport. I picked up an iPod touch. I thought, you know, music will keep me company. Uh, but I suddenly saw this ad for uh, for the Swan Lake, which I'd already seen with my wife and uh, daughter. And I decided to go and see that. I made friends with the two ladies sitting next to me. Uh, fixed up with them to come for another future shows uh, and subsequently you know when i went to all these uh, uh, places uh, seville was uh, absolutely stunning it was on halloween day and uh, there was music everywhere i just went out and i've you know i'm i've got very average musical skills but i composed a tune there while sitting in the you know below the that uh, hiralda tower and all that uh, wow. we have uh, we have Mahajan here who's done the Inca trail uh, from to Machu Picchu. I've gone to Machu Picchu by a beautiful train running across Peru and all that. But you know, a lot of these high uh, mountains and beautiful uh, things you can do, uh, you, you're you never alone because you're connecting up with all the people you are there. And even if you go on a trek, for instance, where you're completely at peace with yourself, I think there can be nothing more healing and meditative than that. Uh, Dr. Mahajan, yeah. uh, would you like to say something? Please unmute yourself, sir. Dr. Mahajan, you're muted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think you've got two devices, Mahajan. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I, do, I, do, I, do okay. uh, I feel like I'm at echo point. Sorry for that. <laughs> Mundar. So, so much so, to come in one of the standard tourist traps. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Dr. Mahajan. Uh, what all languages have you uh, uh, got hold of during your travels? I know you are good at French. So that's interesting you ask because uh, like Brazil, you have to speak uh, Portuguese. So, you know, yeah. uh, I always do think if you know too many languages, you'll confuse one from the other. But seeing my own kids when they brought, they were brought up in Cochin. Uh, so they spoke uh, Malayalam with the uh, household help. They spoke Hindi with us. They spoke English at school. Uh, you know, each language actually Kashmiri with my parents. Uh, uh, there was never a mix up of languages. So I think uh, I, each of these things, uh, the, the, you know, language learning skills does add up to your anti Alzheimer's stuff. So I know a smattering of, uh, you know, just functional uh, Japanese, Chinese, you brush up a, a, a Spanish a little before you go. Uh, and funnily enough, it helps, you know, like there are a lot of these uh, uh, Francophonic countries or Lusophonic countries, the Portuguese speaking. Uh, we have a patient from Angola, Abhishek is there, who just discharged a patient from Angola. And, you know, the moment we said, Obrigado, thank you, she was so thrilled. How do you know Portuguese? So it, they connect up so much better. And they said, we're only going to come to your hospital uh, in future. So, you know, small, small things can connect. I, I was with a, a coach tour in uh, Europe and in Lausanne. Uh, the waitress was, I could see she was a huge group, a huge hall full of people whom she couldn't communicate with all English speaking. And suddenly I said, you know, can I can I help you? I asked her, she dropped her whole, she says, 
uh, eskavupu ve you know ditlu can you please tell them to tell me things slowly so i can understand and i could see she was so relieved after every 5 minutes she would come and give me another cup of coffee and all that so <laughs> it can help like you said learning languages can help so not much more the, you know just a smattering uh, from all those i i can't claim to uh, know but i'd love to know more because the rich film uh, heritage in those languages like uh, you know bengali and uh, malayalam uh, i wish i knew much more of the, even hey. more uh, fine than than i do uh, dr archil dev is logged in from uh, canada he had taken a holiday to watch the match so uh, since the match is delayed he's here with us dr archil by the way professor adakshan put the update that england won the toss and put india into bat <laughs> yeah another 5 minutes i guess yeah yeah before the match starts thank you so much dr vidya and i really enjoyed the talk uh, by dr dhar and uh, as uh, most of us attending this uh, symposium we are born to travel and we love travel and we love nature of course uh, i have my different way of uh, traveling just want to uh, add uh, i'm a vegetarian number one and strict vegetarian with some food uh, allergies so i have to be very specific so i really plan my travel to the t to the dot where we are going to eat which indian restaurant is there around because i am an indian by you know by heart anyway as so i even plan where we go to eat and what kind of food uh, we have been to antarctica and i ate my uh, this haldiram pre cooked pre packaged food there and we had a wonderful time i gave it to the cook there in the ship and he just warmed it up for us and another thing is being vegetarian i've been to china cambodia and uh, so many other non english speaking countries spain portugal so what i do is i have printed few sentences in in uh, english translated into by google translate into their language like i am a vegetarian then in brackets no meat no fish no chicken nothing of that sort because sometimes they feel vegetarian means a uh, seafood is okay Yeah. and then i also mentioned i'm allergic to this i'm allergic to that and i say dairy is okay eggs are okay that i print that with me in spanish in chinese in portuguese and whenever you go out to any restaurant and i just hand it over to the waiter there and uh, do that and another thing because of this reason we prefer to travel not alone with my wife so as a couple and we love to travel by hiring a rent a car and doing our own trips where we want to stop how long we want to stop we have a beautiful scenery we stop there spend half an hour maybe have a drink and then go on rather than being tied up by the tourist company or the bus that they will pick you that uh, they will take you to a specific place to eat or drink and that kind of stuff so this is my contribution but thank you again it was a wonderful session yeah i think now thanks to vegans uh, the it's made the job a lot easier Uh, because yeah. that's genuinely vegetarian, and a lot of uh, European countries and many other places, uh, every city that I've been the last uh, five six years has vegan options available, and they actually advertise even on the menu. Now, in fact, one of the most difficult places to get vegan food is India, which is <laughs> bizarre considering that we should understand that best, and nobody knows. Uh, I, you know, we have our pediatric surgery professor is uh, a vegan, and I've tried to, you know, convince our, uh, you know. Uh, uh very hindu management that uh, you know we need to have some because it's only paneer uh, there's no other vegan options uh, uh, available but i think that saved the day uh, and i just uh, amusing incident uh, dr mathur will remember that dr professor ligidakis who started this ias geo you know it's a collection of all these countries which don't speak english as a primary language but the conference is in english so it's a, you know you meet all the best people from all over the world Uh, but every time there's a there's a uh, uh, what do you call the dinner the end uh, banquet uh, like ligirakis used to do it in his own house so like he said about the salad used to have shrimp so first i would go because i didn't eat beef so i would go making uh, moo moo sounds and say i don't want that <laughs> then after that uh, you know anil agarwal and uh, the director of gb pad and uh, subodh vashne they were they were all vegetarian just stand and make all the other noises and say none of those also <laughs> <laughs> so you know we had a, we had to go in a queue to make sure that nobody gets all the wrong stuff so damsharaj yeah, dictionary everything comes into I play may, 
and finally in fact uh, you know even they couldn't believe that eggs are also but they, you know uh, mrs ligirakis couldn't believe that so finally when all the guests left she fried chips for them at the end and said you can't go hungry from my house <laughs> yeah. uh, dr mathur uh, uh, would you like to say something sir you had your uh, yeah see uh, i think puneet it was a excellent uh, means presentation non academic okay you put, you put the academic things in between here and there you mix the things so i would like to share with everybody that uh, one thing that uh, when we started traveling i think it was first cause in uh, china or china. japan and then it ends right that that was the order uh, and it just happens that my wife and his wife they share the first name it is same for both of them so it was just a uh, chance one thing uh <clears throat> second thing uh could you might remember that one day i was watching this this was in the covid period i was watching a television one of the channel and suddenly i saw a, uh, was it a tiger or some uh, uh, animal photograph with puneet das contributed by puneet das kon banega karupati yeah 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 kon banega karupati yes <laughs> and uh, i shared with him so uh, naturally your photographs are being taken noticed by several other people as well coming to the traveling see the thing is that uh, uh, when i was too busy with my career and my wife was also uh, being working and the children being there to look after i was a solo <laughs> traveler okay mostly my traveling was not for sightseeing but basically for the conferences and then i will see some things around in that city uh, that way but uh, towards the end once the children settled and we had more time to both of us uh, and then we started going for the uh, or most of the um, traveling has been together yes all his and students usually, can't believe him you know that he's i said he's so cool they're all so scared of him so they're all surprised to see that i go for holidays with him you know <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I still I remember mean... the lovely trip we had to Fuji, Mount Fuji. Uh, we were supposed yes. to take this from this uh, Shinjuku station. We missed the bullet train, and that was so fortuitous because we caught the slow train. And in the Shinkansen, we would have rushed through the beautiful November fall colors. It was such a spectacular train ride. Uh, the Fuji was just the icing, you know, cherry on the uh, top. But the beautiful train ride with all the colors Japan has to offer in November. Uh, I, I think we had only because we missed that train. So sometimes the things happen for the best. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Uh, may I just, in, uh, sir, uh, this is Dr. S. K. Mathur, right, sir? Yes, 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 sir. yes, yes, yes. Sir, I have done my M. S. C. N. T. from K. E. M. I was there from '93 to '96. I was Dr. Kirtan's student. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> my general surgery. I had then three months general surgery posting in Unit Two. That is uh, Dr. Anil. Uh, who is it, sir? Anil. Uh, Anil Pinto? No, no, that was no, no. There. You, you were unit three, I think. Avinash Supe was unit one. Uh, unit two, I was unit two. No, no, no. See, there was no unit number. So which ward oh, okay. were referring to? I can oh, tell you. Oh, my ward was oh, ward, ward seven. Yes. <laughs> he's on a, diff <laughs> a different tangent now. Brother Chetan Kanthari was my. You were talking Bapat's unit. Then ah, yes, sir. Uh, no, no, not Ravi Bapat. Ah, uh, Adi Bapat. Yes, uh, not Adi Bapat. Other one. No, Tanay Chetan Kanthari was my uh, lecturer. I oh, think he's also now with it. Dr. R.D. Bapat. Because Chetan was my registrar and houseman, but he became lecturer and R. Dr. R.D. Bapat. R.D. Bapat and this thing, yeah. One of, one of yeah, yeah, so that was 1994, yes, and I remember you. So, uh, Puneet, so the, lead, the, among all the questions in the chat yeah, One of the lead so, motives is, how do you get time? Is that what you're going yeah, to say? Yes, yes, yes. How did you <laughs> yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, so the lead motive seems to be that, how do you get time and all that? So I think that has to be organized. Uh, uh, I re realized that very early in life that uh, I, I, you know, I don't want uh, uh, my great grandchildren to enjoy my uh, fortunes. So I, I uh, <laughs> chose to be in places where uh, uh, I could actually take time out. So, uh, you know, at uh, uh, Amrita and Cochin, the first couple of years was very hectic. 
uh, I couldn't t- take time out. But I think uh, everywhere you can go, even for the weekends, even Delhi has such spectacular places, which are weekend destinations. From Rishikesh, when I was there, practically everything was a weekend away, you know, weekend in Nanital, weekend uh, Lansdowne, you can go everywhere. So uh, even from in winter from here, you can go to Bharatpur one weekend for birding. You can go to uh, Ranthambo Tiger Sanctuary. You can go to Jaipur and do, uh, you know, shopping and food, uh, this thing. So uh, Lucknow is just an overnight train or a Shatabdi away, Chandigarh. Everything is, it's possible. You just need to have the uh, heart to do it. Uh, so uh, the amount of time Ilango spends in saying that, uh, you know, I'm uh, envious. I think he should take time off and do that. <laughs> <laughs> Mango, that's your cue. Uh, uh, Sundari, you have been typing a lot of comments in the chat box. Would you like to say something, Sundari Allen? And one thing is, I think you need to trust your colleagues because <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sort of a, a sub nisa in this thing that, you know, people don't trust their own colleagues, particularly in the yeah. practice setup. So one of my ENT friends in uh, Apollo, uh, classmate from school, a classmate from college, he uh, he says, you know, every time I go, my f- colleagues are happy because they'll get patients. So he says, uh, you know, rather than uh, worry that I will not get them back, of course you'll get them back. If you're good, you'll get them back. Uh, I I went for one year each to uh, UK, and I won't change that experience for anything. I mean, I many people say you don't need to learn surgery there. I don't think it's a surgery. It's a broadening of the mind. It's how you communicate. All those things are really really useful and that's time that's an investment uh, much more than in any stock or mutual fund or land or whatever uh, the only places i have bought is actually in chirai with the way i showed you my mother swinging there those chirai uh, uh, beach resort uh, i've got a cottage in that and i've just uh, uh, taken a uh, booked an apartment in goa for which i'm paying the emis <laughs> oh. uh, Sorry, you got uh, interrupted, Sundari. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. I'm enjoying. I think my definition of health is uh, the ability to travel and being rich is to spend for that. It's a good. We always travel it's without app, without map, uh, without network connection, without camera. I think that's kind of unique experience is very perishable thank Abs- you ma'am ab- absolutely so i i i i've got sleep apnea so i need a cpap machine so i've gone to the hills of arunachal where there's no electricity they switch off uh, switch on the generator for two hours to charge your cameras and all between uh, uh, six o'clock and eight o'clock and i used to hit the sack because at least those two hours guaranteed rem sleep i will get so i think it's you have to take time out and you know get your priorities right uh, there's time for everything some of us who like to travel, I think you can always find a way. There are many people who may not be like that and may, you know, may be happier not doing it. Uh, I don't think we should push them, but uh, I think uh, many, most people don't really try it. So I think my suggestion would be you should at least try it and not be I pushed. Just, yeah, I was just thinking when you know, we could have an analogous footnote on why not to travel. No? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you have so any suggestions food and, No, no. Yeah. Probably food and this, the, you know, that xenophobia. Some, some people generally have a bit of xenophobia. So, so Delhi Belly is responsible for my uh, staying, sl- you know, I would have been uh, football if I if I didn't get <laughs> Delhi Belly. So, food has probably been good for me. No, Dr. Achil Dira said how you can even survive with packed uh, Haldiram. So, food is no longer <laughs> the last thing. If you are traveling for ex- experience, like part of my idea of traveling is to experience the local food. So, so for me, it's different. But for those who'd like to have uh, only their uh, safe zone food, I think there are enough uh, uh, packed food available these days for <laughs> surviving. G- Jimmy has just joined. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. I am so sorry. I was a little bit late. I just wanted to hear him say that. We are yeah. old friends. So. <laughs> yeah, birthday is Jimmy's OT day, so uh, he's he always has yeah. a problem. So I have to book him months in advance when I need him, so that he'll cancel his list and then. No. <laughs> oh hi, hi, so much. sorry, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, Lango, you have your camera on finally. So uh, what has uh, today's talk, uh, you know, inspired you to travel where? Yeah, <laughs> he, he went and spent weeks in Japan and didn't go anywhere. I believe I was like totally shocked. 
ஜப்பானிஸ்ட் <laughs> 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 I did have a very good experience in Japan. It's not that I was locked out in the locked inside the room. I had a pretty much tough schedule in uh, NCCHD and uh, the days used to finish quite late but um I went around the local uh with the locals. I introduced them to Indian cuisine and I used to cook for them and they used to cook for me and uh, we had a normal exchange that's how i spent my time actually trying to interact with a local barber uh, all that stuff so you're I lucky a, you can uh, have wagyu beef and all the seafood unlike yes, and all those things yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was very good it was very good um um and uh, i had a very enterprising um, uh, orthopedic surgeon from chennai who was very fond of anime so he knew quite a bit of japanese uh it was the culture so the same thing you know whenever i go to maldives uh my work takes me to these weird places uh, uh even in maldives most of you would have gone to male and one of the resorts we used to go to the small islands uh, the first time i traveled down south of the equator they gave me a certificate in the air <laughs> aircraft asking for my name and um addu is a very different experience um the people are different the food is different and the hospitality is different um that's what i probably enjoyed everywhere i've made lots and lots of friends in seychelles um from their ministers down down to everyone um i uh, i mean that's I, I, um, the office is right opposite the beach uh but many of you will be surprised i have never spent an evening on the beach sitting with the beer but um but i have met people the islanders their attitude and uh, made great friends i think that you don't was... have guilt you don't have guilt feelings enjoying no because i, I do see no, this no 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 uh, no 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 i, no, I not do at see all. this in indian in indian uh, you know the some parents the generation probably above us where neither they have enjoyed nor do the, you know they the cost the exorbitant cost uh, even though affordability is there they've never spent that kind of money so they guilt themselves they don't let the kids enjoy so uh, that bit I've, i i uh, and once they let go actually i'm very i'm shocked that you can't stop them after that yeah <laughs> uh, like you said now this not i can't go for scuba diving because i have asthma but my wife does she sees a lot of these scuba diving accidents when she works in worked in maldives so she said no to scuba diving but i did quite a bit of snorkeling there exactly <laughs> so snorkeling is even better i mean you can cure your asthma with that <laughs> <laughs> uh, meenakshi you have your hand up uh, dr meenakshi there that's my wife <laughs> <laughs> i hope i hope no complaints <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lovely journey uh, all along uh, we have uh, made ev- i think every possible opportunity into a holiday and uh, so much so that our kids are also on the bandwagon and i remember uh, way back in 2005 we had gone to to th- to our europe tour and uh, spent some five days in geneva uh, and came back and the moment uh, we all packed us ourselves into a train to go back to cambridge uh my daughter leans forward and says papa where are we going the next weekend and <laughs> this, this was the latest because we had taken what is called the swiss pass which allows you access to every mode of transport it's it's a little expensive but to maximize you know we are vasul rajas so to maximize that we even did post dinner boat cruises on lake lucerne uh, you know to uh, max and uh, take the train the funicular everywhere so it was so hectic that uh, we sat in the final lap, lap of the train i said i'm going to relax now before like my my back could hit the back seat my daughter jumps forward where are we going next <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, avani you have your hand up avani uh, okay suma is a, a person who does a lot of these weekend travels so suma uh, you would you like to share your tips 
and she writes about them as well and uh, you know it kind of uh, <laughs> makes everyone else envious yeah she writes very well as well no actually i mean uh, puneet is a lovely talker i really enjoyed it and we've had these conversations when you were in uh, amrita anyways yeah. there i remember your forays to brazil yeah. and other places it's amazing Yeah, uh, Vani, you wanted to say something? Yes. Uh, hello, Puneet. Uh, uh, I'm a part of those old-fashioned people who feel guilty to travel and feel guilty to spend money. And my dad said, you have to live only in India. But luckily, my son lived in America. And my husband got invited to certain places. So thanks to that, I've been to Brunei, Rome, London, America, Mauritius, and enjoyed every place. and in brunei my when my son was 20 and maybe i was like uh, uh, less than 50 he took me snorkeling and though i hurt my foot on the shell you know while snorkeling i'll never forget that my husband didn't come husbands and wives are different right so <laughs> and when i went to america my son asked me one weekend amma where do you want to go i said i want to see my boss dr kuntal rao who was 12 years older than me he took me and the other day i want to cycle on golden gate bridge and he took me cycling on golden gate bridge and for 10 years i stayed with parents who believed the my mother and mother in law who believe that you should not even leave the house and you should not even work so for 10 years i did not even leave the house <laughs> and puneet i work in manipal for 30 years we went to work without seeing any birds in manipal but after it because i was forced to retire at 60 and i'm 68 I know all the birds in Manipal. My granddaughter knows all the birds, and I passed a basic course in ornithology in NPTEL. Wow. And so, wow. it, so I can travel through Pun Puneet's travel logs, or there's a Kiran in Manipal. I mean, you can travel virtually also. And I just want to say I enjoyed it. I'm one of those old-fashioned souls, but I've gone to a few places. Thank Absolutely. you. You know, one one message I'd like to give uh, the older generation is that uh, I think if your kids. Uh, if you enjoy with your kids other than see it as a chore that oh my god you have to spend time with me uh, i think if the kid, kids think it's cool to the, they look forward to the parents much more than if it's a you know it's a chore that oh my god you have to spend time with me you don't look me up you know that kind of thing i, I notice that in a lot of uh, people so instead of that i think if if you're cool enough and the kids look forward to you you'll always have your you know uh, i'm very cool puneet but my I kids want to travel that. with i can see that i no, can no, see that my kids, you said no, your daughter and daughter one sec <laughs> no my kids want to travel with their friends so <laughs> now i travel with dr ramkumar luckily <laughs> ramkumar the workaholic forgot anesthesia does karaoke and travels with me so i'm very cool puneet So like not not cribbing. I I really enjoyed listening to you. I just want to say a big thank you. Yeah, thank we you. have a uh, Dr. Paul uh, Dilberman from Israel. He he actually wants to travel in space. I think Paul, you wanted to say something. Ah, uh, you need to unmute yourself, Paul. Paul, you're mute and mask. Paul, you're muted. Uh, good evening. I'm just in the middle of the surgery. It's uh, orthopedic, so it's a lot of noise anyway. Uh, <laughs> so I just went a little bit outside to to hear you. I I cannot comment because I didn't hear everything. Uh, uh, traveling and medicine. Well, that's what I'm doing all the time. Actually, I'm combining them. Uh, wherever I go, I get uh, I present something for my colleagues, um, for a, a friendly meeting or something, uh, presenting all kinds of bizarre things like low flow, like space medicine, like doing all kinds of things. Uh, uh, for some people, they look magic, but it's uh, it's very deep science. And uh, then I, then I travel and enjoy places, new people, new food, new images. uh so that's more or less uh, traveling i think it's a uh it's the best recreational tool for a doctor uh that's uh uh how shall i put it that uh, covers himself lived all his life within four walls in the operating room and actually uh, put uh, engraving himself putting himself in the grave so going outside places and uh, see people knowing uh, more experience and taste very good food i know you have a very spicy one 
uh, I think uh, it's uh, one of the best uh, way to recharge your batteries. Uh, absolutely. I think I think if I had had to live life again, I've told Pata earlier also, I came into medicine by mistake. I wanted to do geography. And so I think if I had to live life again, I'd probably do, uh, um, you know, Doctors Without Borders, the Medicine Sans Frontiers, because they especially have, they need French. I mean, I f fulfill all the criteria that they have. Surgery is a preferred thing. So, uh, I mean, that's a, what a fantastic way and you're helping out. I think there can be no better inner fulfillment than that. We have the pediatric surgery vegan uh, person I was telling you about. Sorry, Dr. Ashok sorry. Is... from time to time, I have to go in to look at the monitors. So, okay, I'm Bye. hearing you. Bye, Paul. Bye. Okay. I'm hearing you. He's, yeah, he's yeah. worked with, uh, uh, you know, Medicine Sons Frontiers also. So that's, uh, I think uh, we all should do a small stint in many of these things. Uh, we are so paranoid about uh, volunteering for the rural services. I thoroughly enjoyed all my time in, you know, smaller uh, places. I'd love to spend a little more time there if we have a system in place. Uh, and I think uh, I personally feel as older people, we uh, Sitaram from Belor actually has mentioned this also once uh, and I, more I think about it, I think it's true. He says, there's no point in sending the youngest youngsters to the rural villages. They have no clue what to do. We can do without, we can, you know, uh, allocate, uh, allocate, uh, allocate those medicines more appropriately, uh, uh, you know, at this age. So, uh, you know, um, um, so I think there's a, there's a thought that instead of the uh, youngsters having, I think it's much more rejuvenating if we do the Vanaprastha Ashram like that. <laughs> yeah, I think after five to ten years after qualifying is when you should think about posting people in rural areas so that they've uh, learned both life skills as well as uh, how to manage without everything being there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, I, I, uh, I just wanted to add one more thing. The, the uh, more than the guilt trip when you're younger, I think it's the permission from the seniors to, to, to actually take a break. Um, I was taught to say yes to most of my seniors all through my life. So I never dare to ask them for an extended holiday. And if, if they ask why, and I will just freeze. So I never got the courage uh, till I was finishing up my fellowship. <laughs> That's that's part of it because uh, since they never enjoyed, so you can't enjoy. You know that's that's part probably, of the thing. probably sir. But uh, at the time I finished my fellowship, uh, we planned uh, a, a a trip to the Midwest in the U.S. from Pittsburgh to back. Uh, it was it was a really it was a six thousand mile trip which I drove single handedly. But that time I took courage to ask my boss. See, I have done all this. I worked 110 hours a week for all this time, but I think the last 15 days I need to spend with my children because uh, that's the only time where I, my, my car license will be still active, so I need to travel. My boss went out of the way and said, Ilango cannot be put on rolls in these days. And he took me off the uh, rota and see how people once you take that step i think it makes it a lot easier i'm just telling it because a senior you can always take a break but i think as a junior it's very very difficult the nurse discovered my last call day uh, and one of the senior consultants offered to cover the pager for six hours uh, when i was out of the city out of pittsburgh so uh, i think the youngsters should also have boldness to ask for Time off from work really rejuvenates your thoughts, enriches your experience, and make you go, uh, make you last a long way. I think burnouts are quite common in surgery. I think surgeons, I think we should take that. I, I think that's that's the more difficult part. No, West, West, definitely it's easier because you get Saturday, Sunday off. You can always go on Friday and come back on Monday morning. So I, I don't think it's very difficult. Uh, uh, in Pittsburgh, there was no such thing. Sir. I, I was working Saturdays and Sundays. I have to come back at eight p.m. There was no break. But but I was learning. The experience was good, so I used every bit of that. The last fifteen days, I put my foot down and said, "Please, this is this time I need for my family." <laughs> yeah, uh, there's some background noise in somebody's uh, 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 my. I mean. 
I don't know who's uh, there's some background noise. If you can just reduce that. Uh, okay, so um, uh, Radha Krishna, we could be the match said, playing. I have to turn the. Ah, <laughs> Radha Krishna, we are almost nearing our uh, end of our session. You want to say yeah, something? Actually, India is uh, seven for no loss in one point three overs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, India is very. I'm watching. So haven't you, you haven't missed much. Uh, and I haven't <laughs> having said that, you know, Punit, so of course. Uh, uh, Punit's uh, talk is uh, wonderful as ever. It looked like uh, around the world in 80 days. Uh, and the thing that uh, surprises me is that, uh, you know, it looks like he spent very little time in India <laughs> and <laughs> elsewhere. And, you know, how, how as somebody asked you as to whether he ever really practiced medicine or taught people, <laughs> or, you know, it looks like even on holiday all the while. See, the issue of... Uh, uh, doctors traveling, the ones in government service, especially I've seen in the uh, uh, local state government service, you require an NOC for every travel you go. And, you know, if you go more than once in a year, the over is going NOC will get uh, perturbed. And then the corporate sector people can't take time off because, you know, they can't be away from their practice for long, as you said. You know, if they go for long, they're forgotten. That's another thing they're worried about. So now, I've got uh, answers for I've got answers for both. For the corporate yeah. sector, I think we need to make sure that they are tax exempt. So uh, you know, many many uh, societies have done that. The uh, orthodontists, the some surgeons like the Kerala surgeons, they actually take off together and. Uh, I shouldn't say pretend, but they have a parallel <laughs> session. They have a parallel <laughs> session, uh, yeah. session which is on paper. It's a tax write-off. So all those guys can take off, you know, that, <laughs> like and the I, professional I, trip to Thailand. Yeah, you had actually Columbia <laughs> University has a cruise I, uh, CME where there is just one half day of some lecture going on on a you know that day before you get off the cruise and the rest of the time actually you're just uh, so I, I mean I, I didn't uh, go for that academic session but I actually joined no, my actually, college with your, uh, let me cruise. let me continue <laughs> I, I wish uh, Puneet uh, you spoke about the nightlife in each of these places which you didn't maybe you'll come another day to talk about that and then as as many other <laughs> many others mentioned in including Ilango you are all interested in cuisine of the, uh, the places where you visited what is so special Hi. and so on that should be at another session then you know actually going through europe it all looked like uh, you know you visit one country you visited them all they all look the same the weather is same the food is same but you know it's very interesting that you find out what is different in each place and try to you know get to uh sort of enjoy those now uh, the, my my Closing comment is, is, does your agenda change with age when you visit these uh, countries? Is, is the same or you have uh, one thing? And two is, you know, uh, you know, I always look into these antique shops and go, you know, collect stuff and come. Do you do such things as well? Uh, no, I think uh, that has been cured or the retail therapy bit has been cured fairly quickly. Uh, we do pick up some fridge magnets uh, or something you really like. Uh, pick up the expensive stuff, but don't, uh, you know, just because you have to get a souvenir, I don't think uh, we should do that. But I it just remember... It probably be made in China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> interesting, there's Dr. Sanjeev Chutney, I can see he's there. Uh, I, I loved it, you know, uh, when I was still in Cochin, we had the... Uh, the surgical gastro he's a medical gastroenterologist uh, the gastro conference was in cochin so he said you know uh, he just begun to do birding and all that he said i'm coming to cochin i'm coming for the gastro conference uh, you know but uh, i want to go for birding also so we have a small group of uh, medical gastroenterologists also who uh, get together so i said yeah we'll, we'll all go after this so suddenly i get a message saying you know uh, my i think some relative was not well he says uh, uh, so i've uh, I've, uh, you know, I'm had to cut short my trip. I said, no worries, you know, we'll go burning some other time. He says, no, 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 I'm still coming. I've decided to skip the conference and I'll come for the burning. So I just love that attitude, what you said about change of, you know, whether your priorities have changed. Sadiq, who was here just now, uh, you know, the early part of uh, the, the conferences I used to see, he's sitting from day one to day, the last day. Now, actually, I add on days uh, to the meeting. I attend the entire conference, whereas Sadiq gives the first lecture and has disappeared suddenly, you know. So I think <laughs> our priorities do change with time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Puneet, sir, uh, for that nice introduction. Dr. Sanjeev Chetney here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah and uh, I would, I would, <laughs> whatever said as uh, mentioned is 100% true i skipped the national conference to be with sir for one one or two hours of birding and it was really enjoyable <laughs> Uh, yeah so uh, if uh, anyone has any uh, comments or questions please uh, either raise your ha electronic hand or uh, uh, you know uh, type it in your chat box otherwise we are almost uh, ready to close right so uh, only want to quickly round up before you put all your attention on cricket uh, india lost one wicket just now <laughs> holy mm. So there's a lovely comment by somebody uh, about the flip side, and I think that's important to re-emphasize. I did mention it uh, about the climate change and the nature slowly dying and our personal carbon footprint. So I think we have to do sustainable uh, whatever tourism we do. Like a lot of the hotels actually have taken over that responsibility. For instance, most hotels I go to, I just stayed in the ITC Grand Central in uh, Bombay this weekend. And it was a zero carbon footprint. Everything, the water is, uh, you know, in uh, uh, glass bottles that's been there for a long time. But every single, and you actually get a carbon certificate uh, when you leave. So that was so heartwarming that any guilt feeling goes away. But absolutely spot on. He's not put his name is Zuma, but uh, uh, the we need to be mindful of our incessant travel. Uh, it's a personal choice, of course. Yes, agree with you. But I think it it has to be a public choice because uh, we can no longer now with all the affordability afford to be able to rape the planet as we are trying to do. So I think it should be enforced as well. Right. So probably the, you, uh, rather than necessarily taking a flight out somewhere, you could just go somewhere in a neighborhood, maybe even use uh, you know some other form of transport, uh, drive your electric car or whatever and just spend the weekend somewhere yeah uh, your point is well taken uh, anything else you would like to say before we close puni thank you for the <laughs> opportunity <laughs> yeah and thank you for bailing me out because uh, like uh, you mentioned in the beginning we were supposed to do some other session and it was a panel and uh, one person was called away for some icmr uh, uh, meeting so it couldn't be done Thank you, Dr. Mathur, sir, for being there from uh, beginning to end. And uh, thank you only once again for, uh, you know, agreeing at such short notice. Uh, I hope so you all get had... For, we have to get only for etymology. Uh, the two, three things I thought he should do, actually. And right. uh, quizzing, of course. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I will be getting in touch with you to get your uh, dates uh, only. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining in today. And uh, thanks to the rain that delayed the cricket match, I think we had uh, more audience than we would have if the match had started on time. Uh, we'll see you next week with uh, yet another episode of Marvelous Medicine. And uh, before that, let me again, uh, uh, Radha Krishna, can you just put up that uh, our Marvelous Medicine on wheel thing? Yeah, so uh, when uh, Radha Krishna and I started uh, the Marvelous Medicine uh, over over the first few weeks and months, we thought that uh, we should be able to reach the young younger audience, but uh, we have not been very successful. So we have decided to take uh, uh, the Marvelous Medicine to their doorstep. So we'll be having a uh, meeting, the first time live uh, offline meeting of Marvelous Medicine with the students. And the venue is Mahatma Gandhi Medical College and Research Institute, Pondicherry. If any of you are in or around Pondicherry on the 13th of July, which is a Saturday, please try and spend the morning with us at Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, we'll see you next week again on Zoom. Uh, till then, good night and stay safe.